Hey, what's happening, everybody? I'm Steve from GraphicDesignerTips.com. This is Logo Design Bootcamp, episode number 18. Every week, I design a new fictitious logo for you graphic designers out there to become better in the end. So this week, based on the letter R, that's the theme of this week, I have designed a restaurant logo called Rave Sushi Hibachi Restaurant because who the hell doesn't love sushi and hibachi? It's my favorite food besides, uh, you know, going out food besides pizza, of course, because I'm Italian. But um, yeah, so this logo has a lot of intricacies, a lot of little things you're going to learn in Adobe Illustrator, little tools, tips and tricks. And in the end, I guarantee, like I said, you'll become better. So let's go. The Rave logo is very well balanced. It's basically straight down the center right here um, with everything balancing on each side perfectly. Uh, I did a couple things with gradients that obviously add character. I'll show you how to do in Illustrator after this. And um, I wanted to depict two things. I wanted to depict sushi and hibachi. And uh, basically, the way that I did that was I s made the little sushi rolls over here um, with some negative space cutting out this, you know, um, their color scheme, basically, the background. And on the right side to balance it off. And, you know, just to pick a sushi roll, not to really deep. I didn't have to go into detail and make a crazy looking sushi roll. It's good enough. Um, the flame in the middle, obviously, is the hibachi part where you have the flame shooting straight up from, from the base of whatever this is. So that's just, you know, m was my idea with the Rave logo. Aside from, you know, augmenting the font a little bit and cutting the A out, throwing a little dot here, throwing a little dot here. Dot doesn't really have to signify anything but the fact that it just it's a little well-balanced thing. Um, so let's get into it. All right. So although the rave logo took me uh, a few hours to, you know, concept and, uh, produce, I'm going to do this in the next, you know, uh, 15 to 20 minutes. So it's actually a very simple logo, but the first thing we're going to do is, uh, we're going to, we're going to make this shape in the background. And what we're going to do basically is we're going to come up to the rounded rectangle tool. And if I, if you click it, Basically, don't worry about the width and height at this point. You can do that on your own, but you can do you can do a corner radius of whatever you want. So I'm going to do one inch and I'm going to hit OK. And now I'm going to hit delete. And basically what I'm going to do is now whatever I draw is going to have a one inch radius around it. OK, so basically. Let's see something real quick. Um, that is my background shape and I'm going to fill it with this color right here. Uh, this gradient that I made, it goes from yellow to orange, and I'm going to make sure the gradient on my orange to go from the top to the bottom. Now, as you can see, my corners are a little bit more rounded in here, and that's okay because, you know what, like I said, the logo took me a couple hours to do, and I'm going to try to get this done very quickly for you. So, you can mess around with these points by changing the corner radius. You can also grab them with the direct selection and pull them out and make it more, uh, less rounded if you want. So... The next thing we're going to do is we're going to create this little aura around the back. And I've been getting a lot of inquiries through my um, comments. You know, when I put strokes on things, what I like to do is I like to copy this element and paste it behind itself and do strokes and then paste it again and do another stroke. And that is the way that I do it because I like to be able to, you know, move certain strokes whenever I want. But I'm going to do it the way that everybody's been asking me in this case, and it's in the appearance palette. So... Basically, we're going to take this element and we're going to create a stroke on it. And we're going to, uh, let's see, we're going to make it, say, four points for now. And we're going to make sure it's white. So we're going to change the color to white. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to duplicate this item right here. And I'm going to change this top one to, all right, let's see. I'm just going to throw it red for right now, and I'm just going to make this first stroke. It's basically a layer system. It's showing the fill, and then the next one behind it is the white, and the next one behind that is the red. So I want to now make this a little bit thicker. Actually, not too thick. I want to push that white one out more. I want it to be a little bit further away. And all I did was on this outside stroke is I actually made it a gradient. And the way that you do that is you, while you're on your gradient, you're on your stroke right here, you click the gradient area. And we're going to select this same gradient that you created earlier. And all you have to do is, I believe I did, let's see, apply gradient. Which one did I do? Uh, do the one to the, I have to look at the old one. 
see what I did. All right, basically what I did here was I did the apply gradient across the stroke. Uh, I took one of these, I made this, you know, I kept it the orange over here and I put the other side to white and like that. And then I took my transparency down to, I think about like maybe like 40%. So you get this little aura around it. And that's basically wherever I move this entire element, it pulls all those strokes. So for anybody who's been asking me this in the comments, that's how you do that. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to knock this out with these little sushi uh, you know, depictions right here. And basically all I'm going to do is I'm going to take that same rounded rectangle tool and I'm going to make a rounded rectangle. I'm going to make sure there's no stroke on it and I'm going to fill it with black. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to option click and I'm going to move it to the right while holding shift. And I'm going to let's see, it should be about that thick. And I'm going to lift this up a little bit. And as I pull up, I'm going to hold option. So the bottom moves too. see what happens. Watch. I let go option. Now I hit option and it moves. And I'm basically going to now subtract the front shape from the back shape by selecting both. And I'm going to go to minus front in my path liner. And now I have that shape. Now I'm going to lay that shape over. But if you notice, there's, there's no white around that. And this is how we're going to do this. Uh, we're basically going to option, uh, excuse me, um, command C, which is copy, and command B, which is paste behind. And we're just going to nudge it to the right. 10, I'll go 20, hit it like 20 times or something like that. Uh, come into your fill and put white within it all right so let's see all right so we have that one and you might have to mess around with a little bit to get the exact curves you want and i'm going to make this just a little bit bigger i'm actually going to stretch it up and i'm going to option click and i'm going to shift a new one over and i'm going to scale it down now when you do this you want to make sure you hold the shift button and the option because shift is going to help you do this and options going to help you go from the outside just like that so experiment with that you'll see exactly what it does but make sure after you click that corner you hit shift and option and hold them down at the same time all right i need to nudge this back one over all right so now what we're going to do is we're going to pull these over actually you know what i'm going to back up one quick second i'm just going to make sure i got the all right, see how it's not the same length. Now, if you see what's gonna happen here, I wanna make this as large as my original. If I take this point and I stretch this, it's going to screw up our corners. So the way that you keep that correct is you're gonna hit the letter A, you're gonna select all the points, and you're gonna move them over like so. And now we basically have the same length. I'm gonna put that back here where it was. And we're going to select these elements and you want to lock this first by hitting Command-2. So now I can't select this anymore. We're going to select these. We're going to hit Option, click, and we're going to shift them over by holding Shift at the same time so it stays in the same level. And we're going to come up here to the Reflect tool, or O on the keyboard, and we're just going to click here, and while holding Shift, move your mouse to the right. And you're going to see how it flips everything around. I'm going to flip it around so it's identical on the other side. And like I said, you might have to mess around in here and refine this a little bit better like I did, but you know, that's for you guys to learn and um, do on your own. Um, now that we have that shape, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to type out the word rave. Now I have it over here. I'm just going to pull it over here. And basically all you want to do here is you want to go to your character palette and you want to add tracking. Tracking is space between, uh, excuse me, space after a letter. So. I'm going to make my tracking, let's see, about, let's see, 800, something like that. And let's make sure, all right, the letters are now too high. So I'm going to scale them down a little bit, get them the proper height. And now we're going to go into our character again, and we're going to add more tracking again. And do this again. Okay. So now that we have what we want here on the on the word rave, we're going to now come to type, create outlines or shift command O. And now we're able to individually with the letter A, you need to click on one of these and you can move them however you want. So we're gonna have to shift these 
because we're going to have to get that flame right down the center. And you want it to look believable. So you can, you know, manually, let's do this like this, uh, you know, move every letter. And that's okay to do. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to cut out that, this little bar in the letter A. And what you do is you're basically going to come to your pen tool or hit P on the keyboard. And you're just going to draw a little shape right over that. Be careful. Try to get as close as you can. Don't cut into the actual shape. Um, and you're going to now hit shift and select both of those elements at the same time. And you're going to subtract the front. So now you have this shape. And when I zoom in, when I said be careful, you see what you got? You got these little things here. What you're going to do is you're going to hit the minus sign on the keyboard or come up here to delete anchor point tool. And you're going to delete these extra points that are sticking out right here. Just so you got a nice clean edge. You don't want those sticking out. It's going to look kind of funny. And you're going to notice it. So, uh, you know, nobody else may, but if you're a perfectionist like I am, you'll notice it. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. All right. So now we are on to making the flame. That's what we're going to do now. Okay. So to make this flame in the middle, you're going to come up to your swatches. You're going to hit this little drop down. Open swatch library. And let's see where I found this. Um, you're going to come into patterns. Um, decorative and something called Vonster with a V patterns and you're gonna come up with a couple of these little things and I found this one it was the fourth one in it, it you highlight it it's called blazer and basically what I did was I just drag it drug it uh, dragged it whatever onto my desktop and now I have these little flames and there's f six of them so I don't want six flames uh, so basically I'm just going to copy and paste one over I'm going to take all these and delete. And now that we have this flame, we're going to hit E on our keyboard and we're going to flip it around. We're going to make it nice and big, or whatever size that we do want it. Make sure it's straight up and down. All right. And just like before in the appearance area, like I showed you earlier, we're going to first make sure we have that black gradient in there. And we're going to come into our gradient uh, we're gonna come into our appearance area and the stroke we're gonna put on here is gonna be a white stroke that's the first one right yep it's a white stroke okay, I'm gonna add like maybe like 10 points on that Let's see white uh, five points on that and then we're gonna create another stroke so duplicate selected item and we're just going to change that to that other um, gradient that I made before which is the actual same as the background. If I zoom in, let's zoom in. All right, I can't see that white one anymore because I need to make it thicker. So we're gonna go six, all right, 11. All right, so basically what I did here was I did them, it almost seems like I did them in the wrong, no, they're in the right order, okay. Yeah. Just gotta mess around and, and you know get it to where you like it where you want it to be. All right. Uh, now, if you look, you're going to notice that, well, let me back up a second, make this, I don't like it. It's too thick. All right, that white is too thick. Cool. That's what I want right there, basically. All right, so you're going to notice that this A and the V are kind of very close to the middle. What you're going to do is hit A on your keyboard, direct selection tool, and you're going to nudge it over a little bit by holding the arrow in the, hitting the arrow button on your keyboard or just dragging it over with your mouse. Um, the next thing we're going to do is we're just going to type out the word sushi hibachi and the word restaurant. So let's do, and I'll put the names of the fonts in the uh, description below the video on YouTube so you know. And if you notice the word sushi hibachi you know, I want it to start somewhere in the middle of this roll and then get to the end. But if I do that with the restaurant, the word restaurant, it's not as long as a word. So what I did was I actually fudged this a little bit by coming into my character, adding some tracking on the word restaurant, and actually making that word just a little bit bigger. The font size is a little bit bigger, but you'll never notice it because it's the script font. And now on this word, I would I actually did negative tracking. So I'm squeezing the word together a little bit. So they both meet up in the middle at the same part and the ends pretty much end right where this curve is, which is a little trick for you all. And the last thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a, an ellipse, one ellipse, 
and we're gonna option shift click and we're gonna make one more ellipse and uh, actually second to last thing because the last thing is we're gonna make this little gradient in here with all the black elements so we're gonna click here one um, technically what you could do is now by clicking here you could come to object uh, la, la, where are you select excuse me same fill color all right and select those two may oh it's probably a different percentage of black all right so you know what we're going to manually just click while hit, holding shift down and it's going to select everything to these two over here and we're going to add your gradient in there and scale your gradient from whichever way you'd like it to be and if you look at that that is the rave sushi hibachi restaurant logo all right, so thanks for checking out another episode of Logo Design Bootcamp. I come out with these every week, and every week there's new little things that I teach in these videos, and a lot of them are based on comments that I get in the older videos. So it's very important that you comment below and let me know what you want me to touch on in the next couple of episodes. Um, if you have any ideas for themes, I'll definitely consider them. I have a couple times. Um, but that's really it, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, like I said, comment below and hit the like button and share this stuff out on your social networks. Uh, subscribe to our channel by clicking this button right here. Here's a couple of other videos from the series. And that's really it. I'm Steve from GraphicDesignerTips.com. I hope you're learning, and uh, I'm happy to help you. I really love making these videos. Uh, and that's really it, everybody. Have a great night. Peace.